Now, for the next hour, or thereabouts, we're going to talk to Yankee owner George Steinbrenner. Now, here's the only things we can't talk about. We want to tell you that at the top. Anything dealing with the Spear court case and, of course, the investigation in baseball about that. Other than that, we will talk to George, and why don't you welcome him in, George? And no phone calls either, Mr. No Steinbrenner. No phone calls. Just Mike and I. Mr. Steinbrenner, Chris Russo, and Mike Francesa here at FAN. Good to have you aboard. Thank you. Good to be here. Long Hello, time, George. Long time looking forward to this. Hi, Mike. George, interestingly, you know, we've tried so many times to get you on. The thing that I thought about first was, seems a little media campaign in place right now. Is this because of your problems with ABC, or is it trying to pave the way for something that may be coming up next month? No, it's not uh, having anything to do with either. It's just that we got so many requests over and over and over again. I was going to be here all week, and I said, let's let's go on some of these shows and, and, and talk about the team because I think we're at a turning point with this team and the direction that we're going with it. If that's the case, George, how come you didn't go on with Bob Grant over at ABC? Over at ABC, they wanted me, I believe, at, uh, they said I had to go on at 9 o'clock at night. Was that right? Well, there was one that wanted me at 9 o'clock at night. I'm in bed at a quarter of 9 every night. So this isn't uh, a little vendetta against the other radio station? No, or? no, I have no vendetta. Jay Johnstone and, uh, and uh, John Sterling will tell you. I don't, uh, uh, in fact, they stood up on me the other night. I, I don't care. Uh, Mr. Winehouse can say whatever he wants uh, about it. I mean, I don't think it's in very good taste. We're his ball club. When he says that we are not a major league team, I don't know what league we're playing in. And I wouldn't want to have him confront Don Mattingly, Steve Sachs, uh, Roberto Kelly, uh, or Steve Balboni with uh, the statement that they're not a major league ball players. Okay, so George, you say this is a, a pivotal time, a turning point in this franchise. Yankees right now, 25 and 42. Yep. Where are you going? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, very honestly, for years, I, I used to listen to some writers tell me that, look, uh, you got to go with the young kids. Let's see some young kids. Let's not see... Uh, some of the fellows you're bringing in here. I didn't think you could do that in New York because I got a tremendous competitor four miles away who has done a tremendous job. Now, true, in the 17 years I've had the ball club, 14 years we've been winners, only three losing seasons, mm -hmm. where the other fellows have had nine winning seasons and eight losing seasons. Mm -hmm. uh, they went through a period, I think, when they finished last five times. But uh, we had chosen, I felt that you had to be up there in New York every year. These are the toughest fans in the world here. They're the most knowledgeable. They're the toughest. Uh, I'm sure you know that from some of the calls you get. Uh, they know what they're doing. I mean, this is a, a mentally tough city, and it has to be. And you fight for cabs, you fight for a uh, restaurant table, you fight for everything. That's a good way to have it. I didn't think I could come with the Toronto or Boston, not Boston, or Cleveland excuse, or one of these other teams that were going to go and develop the young players. That's what Toronto did. There were years when they were floundering. Same with Oakland. All of a sudden, these young players come along. I didn't know whether New York would be patient for that. So it's now you've chosen expedient, instead of the expedient route, which you have taken many times in the past, you're telling us you're now going to bite the bullet and rebuild this franchise? You're right. We're going with the young players. I've heard you guys talk about some of the young players we got up. I... I, I'm finding it exciting. I, I had a bank president tell me the other day that now he's, people are wanting tickets. Uh, for months they hadn't wanted any last year and early this year. Now he's getting calls for tickets. And uh, I guess uh, the Lyritzes and the Mills, I love the way Mills goes out to the mound. I love the way he comes off the mound. Uh, he's a young kid, but he's showing a lot of guts, and he's going to be a great closer for us someday. Uh, I like, uh, you know, the play of a lot of the young players that have come up here. George, forgive me, but I have trouble believing that you're going to be happy with a 70 and 92 team, despite how good these young ball players are going to be. Well, I'll tell you, I, I can understand why you say that, and you probably, you you got a good case. I mean, it's hard to argue that I've ever been satisfied with less than uh, winning before. But I am convinced now with what I have seen down there where Columbus is leading by five games, six games, where we won four championships last year, where these young fellas, uh, Pete Peterson's been down there a week now. He came back and just said, how'd it look? And he put up five fingers, which means that he says there are five guys that can come up here and do us some good. That's an awful lot off of one AAA ball club. And we've already brought up Mills and Lairitz and, and a couple others this year, see? So, uh, you know, hey. Uh, I admit, I was wrong in thinking that uh, it might not go over New York. There seems to be a tremendous interest in wanting to see young players, new young faces come up here, and how can I do any worse? I'm in last place now. That means Stump Merrill, no pressure. Stump Merrill should be back. If he shows you some life, shows you some enthusiasm, and the team plays hard all year long despite not how many wins you get, Stump Merrill should manage in 1991. Yes. 
Now, I don't like to be saying these things because every time I make a change, whether it's a bona fide reason or not, then somebody says, well, you said this, you said that. Uh, let me say this. I'm i got to be very satisfied with Stump Merrill. I mean, we came back from a tough road trip. We had trouble winning in Milwaukee, and it's certainly trouble winning in that new dome in Toronto. And yet we went four and three with some of these young fellas and spiced with our veterans. And... Uh, you know, just when Lyons goes up to the plate, he looks like he means business up there. He's a tough kid. I like that. Uh, something happens maybe later in their careers when the big money starts. But, you know, this was a good road trip for the Yankees, a very good road trip. And I think we'll acquit ourselves well against Milwaukee in this three-game series starting tomorrow night. George, you're talking about, okay, maybe moving some people and bringing up some more kids, maybe trading away some guys to teams who may need somebody down the stretch. Is that what you're talking about? Could be that that's what happened. Well, but then let me ask you this. Yeah. Because of the instability in this organization, who's, who's running this organization now? Are you making the calls? Is Bradley making the calls? Is Peterson making the calls? I mean, everyone in baseball says, hey, who's running the Yankees? We know George is on top, but you've said, hey, I'm not always there making the decisions. Who is running the Yankees now? Well, you'll find it's a combination uh, of George Bradley and Pete Peterson talking maybe on an average of an hour to two hours uh, on some days every single day. Uh, they're making decisions. Bradley was in there watching Columbus for eight days, then be followed by Peterson for seven days. Now, those two guys will decide. I told them... What if they disagree, George? Well, then you got a problem. Then I suppose I'm a tiebreaker. Then why do you have two guys? you got to well, have one guy running the show. Well, you, you'd think that you, that's a good point. Lots, most teams do have one guy, and yet most some teams don't. So Boston has Gorman and Sullivan. You think they both don't have input? Yeah, but George is there. But George, the other George is out on Tampa watching the Yankees on TV, and they got Pete up here in New York. I mean, how could they have equal footing if one guy's not even at the ballpark every day? Well, let me say this. George Bradley has been on the road a lot looking at our minor league teams. He watched them in spring training. He watched them at development down there. Uh, so he really knows what's going on down below more than he knows up here. Pete calls the shots with this team, basically. Uh, he made the trades uh, this year, uh, uh, but George Bradley knows more about who's down there in the minors. Pete's new on board here. What about the guys, George, in baseball? You see this all the time, people saying, hey, the Yankees have become a laughing stock. You don't know who's running the team. You talk to somebody every day, someone's got a different idea of who's trading who, who's in charge. Shouldn't you just have, like, a, a, a real clear line of command i mean if you're going to make the decisions from your key baseball people shouldn't one guy be in charge rather than having peterson and bradley and this and that going back and forth i don't know an awful lot of teams that just have one guy you think peter o'malley doesn't have things to say about what the dodgers do uh, i'm sure cashin and uh good hey they're a try triad there the, the mets that have made some damn good decisions and freddie wilpon has some input there too now it's it i'm comfortable with the situation uh you can be critical of it uh, and maybe you've got reason to be the way we've looked so far this year. But uh, we are starting to turn it a little here. And these young fellows are giving us something we, we haven't seen around here in a while. So uh, we're going to go along with it this way. George, if there's one thing for this team, the 1990 Yankees, that you would like to do over again, what would it be? Maybe not firing Dallas Green, maybe not bringing Bucky along so quickly, maybe not trading Dave Winfield. And they were not giving Pasquale all that money. What's the one thing you'd now, like to do over again? Uh, I, I wasn't in favor of the Winfield trade, but I went along with it. I made that public. Uh, as far as Dallas Green's concerned, there's a lot to that story. You know, there wasn't, uh, you know, Dallas and I have had our differences, and he's been pretty critical of me, and I haven't said anything that bad about Dallas Green. But believe me when I tell you that there were players that wanted that done. It's a strange thing about wow. players that I can't understand. You know, they're stray and I don't let players dictate to me. Dallas and I had a problem over one thing, and uh, we just couldn't get that resolved. Uh, I think Dallas Green's a good baseball man. Uh, but, you know, players are funny. They'll come to you and they'll say, geez, we just can't do it with this guy. We, we don't like the way this is. We don't like the way that is. I don't often listen to it. Because the strange thing is, then when a move is made to make a change, then you hear these same guys that came to you tell you, Oh, geez, I don't, I, what a great guy. Sorry to see him go. So I put that question to Don Mattingly last winter during our negotiations. I said, why when you players uh, express yourselves that you cannot perform up to your maximum under the situation and so forth, and a move is made, why don't you stand up? Why don't you say, hey, we were part of it. Well, he says, I don't know. It's a tough question to answer. Maybe I've got to say to you uh, that we respect the position of manager, and we just don't want to criticize the position but are willing to criticize the man. I said, that's no way to be. I said, if something's done that you're a part of the decision, uh, then you should stand up. And he says, well, it's strange that we don't, but he says, I think it might be out of respect for the position. I said, could it be that you think you're going to see this guy down the road somewhere? Uh, another another manager for general position? And on the Yankees, that might be so. You know, mm -hmm. Billy Martin, any guy stood up saying about Billy, he was back five times. Uh, so... Uh, 
uh, there, there are reasons that the players don't want to uh, stand up when the time comes, and you're always standing there out exposed to the to everybody, and uh, you don't get that support you might want. Mike and Randall going to fans five fifteen, talking with Yankee owner George Steinbrenner. And George, do you admit that Dallas was a, a good baseball man? I think Dallas was a pretty good baseball man. Yes, I mean I'm not going to get into an argument about Dallas. But uh, I don't think, uh, by the same token, if you took a vote of the team, he would have been named Baseball Man of the Year. Well, I'd like you to comment on this, okay? Because yeah. this was a quote of Dallas about you. Yeah. He said, George doesn't know a thing about the game of baseball. He mm -hmm. said, that's the bottom line. When a guy who wants total control, mm -hmm. and he doesn't know my job or the strengths and weaknesses of his club, then you got a big problem. Well, would you believe I was told by players that Dallas wasn't running the club? Well, who was that? So well, I've, like. I've had it said that Charlie Fox, who I happen to like as a person, was was making more decisions than Dallas was. So I don't know. I, I can't get into those arguments. I don't choose to sling mud at Dallas at all. It, it's behind me. Uh, significantly, when uh, I was getting ready to hire him, the Cubs management uh, gave me warnings. You know, so George, I don't know. How about the Winfield thing, George? You said a second ago I, I was not in favor of that yep. Winfield trade. I mean, let's face it. All in New York knows all the problems you two had. I mean... We find that very hard to stomach, saying that George Steinbrenner was not behind at least the platoon or maybe the or, or the maneuvering of getting Dave Winfield out of here. How about that? I felt Dave coming back after a year should have been, uh, and I've said this publicly, should have been our DH and the, occasionally play right field. I had my managers tell me that they couldn't play the outfield that well anymore. Now that he was lost a step or two and he just couldn't play it. I had coaches and managers tell me that. One of them's the most successful manager in baseball today. Uh, so. All I can say is that uh, I wanted him to stay. Uh, I didn't necessarily agree with it. I'm not anti-Mike Witt. I think he's going to be a good performer. He's going to be back soon. Uh, but uh, uh, I didn't want that trade. My troubles with Dave Winfield were over the Winfield Foundation and his previous agent, Al Froman. I thought there were things being done in that foundation that were wrong. Okay? We three times had to go to a law case. Finally, we went into an arbitration at the suggestion of uh, one of the sports writers in town. They picked an arbitrator that we were both satisfied with. I didn't know that man, Mr. Armstrong, a man of tremendous integrity and reputation, was the head of the NAP Commission here in New York. Uh, he was brought in, he arbitrated. What happened in the end? Uh, Dave got up and admitted that there were things going on in the foundation that shouldn't have been. Yeah, but you're telling me that one for 23 in the World Series, that in the 81, after Reggie left and everything else, had nothing to do with it as far as Winfield was concerned? One for 22. Uh, you know what I got it wrong, George. Yeah, no, I don't want to. I don't want to show you guys up because you're too good. You're too tough. Uh, but I think it was one for twenty-two. But anyway, he came in to me the next morning, and uh, he said, uh, "Boss, I want to tell you." He says, "I owe you one. I really stunk the house out." I thought it was a very nice thing for an athlete to do. And I said, "Hey, we'll get him next year," and that was the end of it. George, when you when you look at how the Yankees are now and and the problems that they faced last year and faced this year, you, you can probably trace it for the last eight, ten years, and you look to the instability, and I keep getting back to the managers, 18, 18 years, 11 different guys and general managers and pitching coaches and on and on. When you bought the Yankees mm -hmm. way back, probably what led you to buy the Yankees probably was, uh, I'm just guessing, you tell me if I'm wrong, you probably Good. were a guy growing up who was a fan and saw all the great Yankee teams and the pride and tradition and everything, but all that was built on a stability, and you've come in and you're a businessman, and what business could run on the instability that you put this organization through over the last 18 years, specifically in the last decade? Okay, good good question. Good, very well thought out question and, and a worthy question. Now let me answer you, okay? Number one, when I took them over 17 years ago, uh, they were in the doldrums. The Yankees hadn't had anything to cheer about in a long time. I told them that I'd give them a championship within three years. I remember Bill Beck standing up and saying that in 48 in Cleveland, and he delivered. Well, we've delivered by 1976. We won the pennant. Uh, and the Yankees suddenly got going again. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk recently. Let's talk the decade of the 80s. Okay. In the, in the game of baseball, as in the game of radio or television, you li live and die on your record. If your ratings go down and you're the hottest show for four years and your ratings go down, you're out. Yep. It's, it's a cruel, cruel business in television and in radio the same way, I imagine. Yep. A station's ratings fall, they change the format. They may go for a different kind of music or a, not a talk show or not sports or whatever. You've got to keep your ratings. Now, that's what you're in here for, the record, okay? So, let's talk about the 1980s. In the 1980s, the Yankees won more games than anybody else. Right. At the whole. Okay? 854. Yes. More than any other team. And that's what my goal is, to win more games. But, George, aren't you, now, a, bottom, aren't yeah. you a bottom line guy? Yeah, you got to let me finish. Okay. All right, now, 
Now you're saying, well, that's in the 80s. That's a 10-year period. What about the last five years? I just saw the other day in the newspaper that in the last five years, the Yankees have one of the five best records in all of baseball, win and loss records, which means that we are winning. We are in the pursuit of excellence, and we're succeeding in, in just the last five years. That amazed me, because when I pick up the papers and read, I would think that we are at the bottom of the league, but we're not. We're one of the top five in, out of 26. Now, let me tell you this. The draft system is in baseball. The old Yankees in the 30s and 40s, they went out and got in the 50s whoever they wanted. But for some reason, we have found the draft system to be desirable to produce equity and parity within football, baseball, basketball. You do well, you're penalized. You draft last. The Dallas Cowboys, six, seven years ago, were the greatest team in football. America's team. Now, you're going to tell me in four short years, Tom Landry became from one of the great coaches to one of the worst coaches? No, but his no front office fell apart. Yeah, well, the draft, the draft but is you, what brings about parity. Yeah, but you weren't drafting, George, because you were signing free agents. We had to, because I felt we had to stay up there. You can't argue with the bottom line. In the 10-year decade, we were, one, uh, we were the number one team, and if you just took the last five years, we were fifth. All right, George, now you gave us a history lesson there on the decade. All right, okay? now let me finish. Okay. Okay. You guys are very good at letting me finish here. Yeah, well, come, I got a couple of questions. Oh, I'm afraid. Right. That's why yeah. I want to keep talking. This no, but, wait, but the only this thing is this, busted. George, wait a second. Oh, the thing is this. You want to talk about history. The 80s is the only decade since the teens where the Yankees did not win a championship. And if you're a bottom-line guy, you know also that the idea is to win it all, not to finish second, not to finish five games out every year. And in the 80s, the Yankees didn't win a championship you're for the first time since the teens. You're the interrupting other, my filibuster. But the other thing is this, George. You turned on Mattingly and on Winfield at times and said, what have we won since they've been here? Now, you can't take bows for your record and then turn well, around well, and well, knock well, those guys. I don't think I said that about Mattingly. Or at times you said, you know, what have we won? You've made little quotes, little, little remarks about what have we won since they've been here. And you believe everything you read in the newspaper. Hey, George, what have they won? Well, you, you, right, you said, I'm not done. In 81, we won the championship. In the last five years, we won the top five teams in baseball. You didn't, well, win, you didn't, win, win, you didn't win no series in We anymore. won the American League Championship in 81. Yeah, you didn't win the difference. series, yeah. George. No, 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 no. Hey, listen. The, Cle the Boston Red Sox, who everybody's so great on, okay, they haven't won a World Championship since 19, what is it, 16? Yeah, but George, you're the Yankees. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, but we're the Yankees under the new system, the draft system, that equalizes all things. I can't go out like the Yankees used to and have every kid want to play because they never get a chance to draft them. Now, you talk about guys, the Mets, all right, the Mets were last place five years out of the last 17. During that period, I knew where Dwight Gooden was. He lived seven miles away from me. I would have loved to draft to Dwight Gooden or Gerald Strawberry. We never got a look at him. But we, you signed free agents all that time. Yeah, but even if we had, we wouldn't have got a look at him because we, the choices we were giving away were usually between 20 and 26. See, we never got up in the top one, two, three, four, five. You don't get there unless you're the losing this team in baseball. But what about the fact, George, you, you don't think that the instability in this organization is ever... Hey. hey, George, would you go eat at a restaurant that was under new management every month? I don't know. It depends on what kind of food they were serving. Not but George, you know you said, George. Well, All right, let me tell you something. There has been instability, okay? I'm willing to admit that. There was instability in 1977 when Billy came in and won the championship. We get into 1980, we fall 14 games behind. I felt a different type of guy was necessary. I brought in Bob Lemon. Bob Lemon made up the 14 games, won the championship. 78. 78. Yeah, yeah, 78. Not 80, George. No, I'm sorry, 78. Okay. The, amaz the thing is here, you know, I, you can argue that all night long, and you make a good point. It's a good point. There is a sense of great instability here. But all of those guys that have been in and out, a lot of those guys were in five times. Billy, what, two times, Lou? A different, different numbers of times. Bob Lemon twice. But there were reasons at the time, and they're all still with me. I mean, I still got Clyde King with me, uh, Stick Michaels back with me. Well, that proves me, George, got money. That's what it proves Well, it doesn't prove money, because these are talented fellas, you guys, that could go anywhere they want to go. They could go with other ball clubs, but they do stay. George, Bob Lemon's still with me. He's my chief scout in the West Coast. George, how do you feel now when you go to Yankee Stadium and you, and you see people out with banners, Steinbrenner and Musco, and... I mean, and let's face it, a lot of Yankee fans would say that there's no longer Yankee tradition that George Steinbrenner has ruined, even despite the record in the 80s, yeah. the concept of Yankee tradition. How would you handle well, that? Well, let me tell you. There are a number of people that come out with banners. I, I, I will defend to the last breath the right of the fan to boo George Steinbrenner and bring a banner. 
I mean, I had a banner day so they could parade with them last year. That was after you had some guys at the at the at the uh, exits taking some away before that. Well, well I stopped. Those that guys were hurry. calling us up. Yeah, I I stopped that in a hurry. They, I tell you something. As long as they don't obstruct the view of the people, they can do that. I heard him boo Reggie Jackson this stadium unmercifully. I heard him boo pitchers that had pitched five great games. They have one stinker and they get booed. That's the New York fan, and that's his right to boo. That is inherent. Now, we got more media coverage in this city than anywhere else. I was in Milwaukee the other day, Bud Selig, one newspaper really to deal with. Uh, Cleveland, one newspaper to deal with. When you got 14 or 15 guys to deal with, and everybody's got to come up with a new angle. I admire these young writers that are writing today because their bosses tell them, hey, come in with a sensational story or else you're out. And it's tough. It's hard for them. But so, the bottom line is, George, the tradition is not there. I mean, well, not enough the media, but the fans don't like George Starbuck. Yeah, How do you handle that? I know. You say that. That may be so. But you walk down the street with me someday, and, and you Well, might, you know how it is, George. They want to shake your hands because you're George Starbuck. But as far as you being the Yankee owner, they don't like it. How do well, you handle that? I don't know. That's what you're saying. And I'll take your word for what you think you know. I'm not so sure of that. I'm not so sure that everybody, certainly there are going to be people who are going to be unpopular and uh, find me unpopular. That's, from the day they assign me the word, the name, the boss, you know, the boss, nobody really likes their boss. I don't care whether you like your boss or, do you, you like know, there's going to come a day when you won't like him. You know that. Do, do, you, you, like the, do you like the nickname, George? I don't know. You uh, do, George. You love it. Come on. Uh, no, George, you, George love, you love it now. George, you love publicity. Come on. Now, see, there you are putting words in my mouth. Do you love publicity? No. Do you like the back pages? No. Do you like Lupica? Who? <laughs> Who? Lupica. Who's Lupica? Oh, you know who he is. The guy that used to write for the Daily News? That guy. Yeah. Well, Mike and I have our differences. He is very, I think he has the old Gabriel Heater uh, complex that you take on the big guy and you make a name for yourself. I think that's what Mike really felt. Mike's a talented young man. I'm not going to get into arguments about what Mike writes about me. But, but George, if you were as good at picking managers uh -huh. as you were at manipulating the media at times in this town, you'd have Casey Stengel after 15 years. <laughs> John Wooden. <laughs> You have like a Miller Huggins, Joe McCarthy rate again. Yeah. You'd have one guy in thirty years. <laughs> yeah, and I probably own a radio station. You know, uh, how about you know, how about bringing some of these guys back? I mean, George, right, I mean, let's talk. I mean, you got Martin six times, Miller twice. Miller goes, does a great job with the Reds. You let Hauser go, great job with the Royals. You let Jeff Torborg go, look at the White Sox. Now, like wait a minute. You won't hear Jeff Torborg say a bad word, and I doubt that you'll say Lou. I help Lou get that job. Let me tell you a little story about the Cincinnati job you might find interesting. First of all, Bob Quinn went out to Cincinnati to interview, okay? Uh, Marge Schott called me. I like Marge. I think she takes a lot of abuse out there because she's a woman, and I, I'm defensive of, uh, for her in baseball. Uh, she goes out to Cincinnati. Uh, Bob goes out there and talks. She calls me. She says, I'm not going to hire him. I said, why? And he says, because he gets out here, and all of a sudden he's saying he has to have a car. And that wasn't part of the deal. I said, Marge. Bob Quinn is a loyal, loyal guy. He will be protective of you. He will not stab you in the back, as other people have been doing. I said, you need Bob Quinn, and I guarantee you, you will be happy, and he will be happy, and he'll give you that loyalty, which is so important. So Bob gets the job. Now Lou. Now they want to talk to Lou. And this is true, exactly what happened. First time I've ever told this story. And she came to me, and she said, uh, uh, we would like to interview Lou Pinella. And I, so I got to go to Lou. I said, Lou, you're like family with me. Now, look. I didn't like the Toronto, because we'd be facing each other all the time, but this is a wonderful situation. You've had other offers. Cincinnati's a great town, great sports town, and I said, they got good material. They're better than a last place or next last place club. I said, you could go out there and really do a job. We had that discussion. I said, I'm going to give you permission, and I hope you go out there. Lou goes out there. He has his interview with March. March calls me, I'm not going to hire Lou. I said, why? He says, well, he wants three years. And I said, give him three years. Give him three years, and he'll take that team and put it right in the middle of the pennant race and might even win it for you. I said that to the press in Cincinnati. Well, if he's such a good manager, why let him go? Because certain things happened here. Would you believe that there were players that came to me about Lou, and I didn't want him to get oh, it? Oh, right. come on. George, there's I, always going to be players. I, You're never going to have 25 wait, 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 guys that look I, and I also felt that maybe I had moved too fast with Lou. I think Lou's a good manager. I'm willing to admit that that was a mistake, not bringing him back. I tried to bring him back. He said, no, I'm going to stay upstairs. Was it a mistake bringing Billy back six times? No. Six times, George? You were a laughing stock to a lot of people. Well, I was. Uh, if you saw, uh, a lot of people didn't feel that way. Billy was a baseball genius. He had an instinct that no other player or manager I've ever seen had for the game. Now, where he got that, I'm not going to say. I don't know. He always told me he got it from Casey. 
Well, wherever he got it, he had that instinct. His players knew with all of his other things that he could do things to make games go their way, to have things happen that other people weren't expecting. He was a baseball genius on the field. I'll always be defensive. He was, uh, was a great love between us. Uh, I took care of him. I was going to take care of him all his life. If that's what, if he wanted to stay with me, and uh, I will not uh, not be party to knocking him down. If he had short calls, shortcomings, they were off the field. I didn't ask you that. I asked you, was it a mistake? In any of those six times, did you make one mistake? You said, "Good, I should have put it back this time." Maybe the last time when he had the problem down at Lace. I mean, was there a mistake there or not? At Lace. Well, the place down in Arlington, well, Texas. Well, now, you guys don't go there, do you, Mike? No, not at all. How about Mad Dog? No. <laughs> I don't, George. No. no. Okay. Well, anyway, he did. That was a mistake. I came into the hotel that night and saw him at age sixty with an ear half hanging off, full of blood. I said, Billy, you, you know, I, I tried my darndest to get through to him on that, that he just can't do that stuff anymore. And he had a certain thing that would always happen to him about two or three months into it, and then we did everything I could to prevent it. But you can't knock Billy uh, with me, and I don't think it was a mistake for me to have him back five times. You can, you know, you're entitled to your opinion, and maybe fans feel that way, but he was great for me. Well, George, you know, we're talking about a team now that has been... If you take a year and a half, count this as a half year, yeah. a couple of games short, 30 games under 500. Uh -huh. Okay? Okay. Now, we look at all the problems, the guys who have moved through. Do you ever think now, you, you've made a great business decision with the Yankees, the cable deals you sign are phenomenal. Do you ever think maybe you should just handle a business end and get out of the baseball end well, altogether? I'll tell you, at my age, I've given a lot of thought to getting ready to turn it over to uh, other people. My son has been up here a year and a half. He's not like his old man. He was uh, very well received by everybody in baseball. He's been doing another deal for me now, working on something else. And I've given serious thought. I'm getting to the age where I've got to start to take it easy. I can't be going the schedule I'm going. And uh, George, none of us age. believe you, though. You know that. Yeah, I know you don't. We don't. I don't. We okay, expect well. you to be on the phone, you know, to the manager at uh, what if I, midnight. <laughs> what if I put my hand up? No, we still don't believe I'm not going to believe Well, George, yeah. I mean, you love them. I mean, let's face it. You love them. I and mean, you, you, you're not going to get this any kind of publicity anywhere else except your own the New York Yankees. You can't, you can't buy that or get that anywhere else. Well, that might be so. That you might, might, you that can do might this to 80. So. I mean, it keeps you young in a lot of ways. Well, it does help to keep you young because it keeps you on your toes. But I'm kept young with a few other things I'm working on right now, too. George, do you think you've run this team into the ground? No, absolutely not. Not, not, when, we, not when we've got the young players coming. Up. You, see, you know, George, the minors. You, this is not Joe DiMaggio coming up, George. George, what's there in the minors? Uh, you know, Bernie Williams is still sitting in double A. No. Island's been up. Atkins you're talking about? Mama Hot? I mean, uh, Mills, I know, is, is a guy who could be a reliever. I mean, you tell me in Columbus what's there that's going to be well, the great. I think you're going to see a guy come up named Kevin Moss. I think he's going to be great. All right, Moss. you got a little infielder named Stankowitz that's going to come up one day very soon. Those aren't down with strawberries, though, George. <laughs> well, they you are know, first draft choices. I never got a shot at there. But well, you're talking about this Columbus team's gonna gonna rebuild this Yankee team. Those guys hey, in Columbus aren't the only. Good. We're not the only team with problems. There are problems with a lot of other teams. You know? How do you explain the Chicago White Sox to me? Tell me. Well, well I'm off there for real yet anyway, so we have to wait and see. But then again, George, let George Steinbrenner are joining us here on a fan. Mike and the Mad Dog, 532 on Where am I joining you? 66. On the fan. No, you're oh, joining us. Sounds like I'm joining in a ring. No, no this is the <laughs> kind of odd. But the thing is, George, it's, it, well, it's kind of like, you know, the idea that the guy sitting yeah. out there, George, on the LIE right now, has been a Yankee fan for 30 years. Right. Wonders if they're going to get better. And I don't know that there's enough talent in Columbus right now to say in two years they're going to be any well, better. we're going to find out. Because that's what we're going to start to go with. Are you going to sign free agents? Be surprised. Are you going to sign free agents anymore? If there's somebody that can really help us, the idea. What, what do you? What about the idea that these guys are running away from the Bronx now? Is that true? Hey, listen. This is a joke. Let me tell you something. There's a guy that came up to me, just came with it, Matt Noakes, in the locker room at Milwaukee the other day, and he says to me, Mr. Steinman, I'm really happy to be here. He says, I never. This is really a first-class organization. The way everybody treats me, the way we travel, the way we do things. He says, I'm really happy. It's only been here a week. All right, he's been away. Right, right, try Steve Sachs. Try Steve Sachs. Go to Steve Sachs. I mean, they said, well, George can't sign free agents anymore. Are they kidding you? You know, three years ago, the top free agent was Jack Clark. Two years ago, the top free agent was Steve Sachs. I got both of them. This year, we were second in the Langford. I'll take two out of three. You know, speaking of that, speaking of trading Clark and Ricky Henderson, George, yeah. let's face it, Zippo in return. Bad, bad trade on Ricky. Admit. Is that your fault? Your for, your for Ricky, Ricky had a gun to your head, George. Not I'll my give fault. you that. Not my fault. Not your fault. Nope. You, you, How's fault? 
The Sid guy did. that traded him. But I don't blame Sid. He felt we needed pitching. He got. You know when I found out about the Henderson trade? Yeah, a half hour before it took place. George, how can you let you trade a superstar? How can your organization trade a superstar player without talking to you about it? Hey, they talked to me a half hour. Bob Quinn will tell you that. Uh, how now, when you? Sid Drift came with me, you guys are saying, butt out, George, butt out. Let the general managers, the baseball people run the club. I did. You can't let him butt out. But your thing is, no, that's even, what you're telling me. Sid that's didn't what you're he didn't even last a year. I know. Who, Sid? Yeah. Well, I think he might have been... Th I, I will not say anything bad about Trift. I think he may have been concerned about that trade and how it was going to work out after it was made. How about Jack Clark, the fact that you knew uh, Tom Rich? No, the fact talk. that you knew Tom Rich and wanted to give Jack a break. That was your fault yep. then, Jack yep. Clark, right? You know why? Because Jack Clark's a, a hell of a ball player. And he came to me and he said, Mr. Steinbrenner, I would like to be traded back home. My family will not come east. Oh, yeah, they said that. Right, now, they, wait a minute. Let me say say Jack you would have said the hell with him. I put family first, and I put the baseball second. I put Rick Cerrone's health and his knee first, and the baseball second. A guy batting 300, I could sure use him today, okay? But when I took a look at what he had, and I showed him my knee, I said, you're not going to end up like I am. I said, you're going to get that taken care of. I want to stay. The team needs me. I said, the hell with that. You've got 50, 60 years more, and you're not going to be living a cripple. And if he tells any different way, that's what happened. I have a lot of respect for Rick. So, you know, when Jack Clark comes to me and says, I can't get my family, would you please do it? I said, okay. For I what? was in San Diego about a year ago at an Olympic meeting. And do you know what he said in the papers? He says, I'd play for George Steinbrenner any day. Well, if that's the case, when you signed him for the three-year contract, why did he tell you then that he wanted to go back to San Diego? He didn't. It's his family. That's first, fellas. That's first. Uh, uh, that's not second. When a guy cuts, same with Whitson. Whitson told me the same thing, and he's pitching great out there. Not every ball player wants to play in New York. For any either place, because well, Whitson, of the city. Whitson was a strange case. I'll give you that. He yeah. couldn't pitch you. I, don't, I still don't know what was wrong with Eddie Whitson, but that, that's for another day. But thing is, George. I mean, you know, we shake our heads. We look at these things. I mean, we. Hey, I didn't want Jack Clark to leave this ball club. How about Britt Burns? Go back to when you signed Britt Burns, and then okay. people are saying now that Pasquale Perez, you didn't check him out, and he had a bad arm before you signed him. Listen, let me tell you something, about Pasquale Perez. That's interesting. Pasquale Perez came to camp, and he was in good shape. And he came late because he had some problems with his visa in the Dominican. Okay, so he gets into camp. He's there just a few short days, not the same time as the other pitchers, and they put him in a game against the Braves at West Palm. And if I'm not mistaken, they pitched him three to four innings. And I'm turning to the people next to me and saying, why are they pitching him this long? He was going great, throwing the hell out of the ball. Why so long? He just got here. And I never could understand that. Well, and I'm not sure that didn't have something to do with this problem he's got. Well, that takes you back to your manager. Your last manager, was he ready to be the ma a manager in the major league level? Well, as we look at it now, I guess you could say I made a mistake. George, so, you know, you, we always, you always talk about the baseball people. Yeah. You know, and your baseball people. And this, uh, who are you listening to? Who am I listening to now? Yeah. I'm listening to George Bradley, Pete Peterson. They're my baseball guys. Just those two guys. No, yeah. so, and one other, Brian Sabian, who's the head of my right. scouting. I listen to him. And then, and then you guys sit and three, you sit I listen to you two guys occasionally. No, you uh, don't. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. You wouldn't I be 25 and 42 <laughs> if you did. No, listen, I wouldn't be 25 and 42. Tell me, how many times <laughs> have you been out to support me at this stadium? Oh, this how George, many games? George, we've been there now. Come on. Oh, no, yeah. Yes, we have. Well, how many times? George, yes. I've only been to the Yankee Stadium three times well, this year. Well, now, see, there you are. And I, I wish you you'd come out to support me more. George, I just wish you would, I just wish that when I get out there, you'd score a couple of runs. Hey, listen, I'll tell you, when you do get out here, you come and see me, and I promise you, I'll listen to you. 5.37 your time, Mr. Steinbrenner, joining us. George, how about this football mentality? How about the fact that you've always been a big football guy, and you try to use that football mentality and bring it into a slow, long type of it's a long pace game baseball and you brought your football mentality to baseball yet it doesn't work how about that well that's been said many many times well, it's true, I just, well you say it's true i mean you're telling me everything is true now nobody knows everything see but uh i am have a football mentality i'm a great believer in the greatness of vince lombardi and paul browns of the world uh vince lombardi said it best uh Winning isn't a sometimes thing. Winning is an all-time thing, and you got to strive for it all the time. Winning is a habit. Unfortunately, so is losing, and we got to do something to get out of that. Uh, and, uh, you know, the football mentality that I have only goes to discipline and to things like that. And uh, I've even eased back some on that because I've come to realize it is a very long season. But there are still things basic that you don't want ball players doing and that you don't appreciate them doing because they're supposed to be held up as an example to young Americans. And when they do certain things that they do, and when I find out they're, that certain guys are doing those things, it doesn't make me very happy. George, what are you doing with Deion Sanders? Deion Sanders uh, has a deal with us that if he's on a major league roster, uh, come July, he will stay and play baseball. Now, uh, I will say this about Deion. He's a tremendous talent. We've had to rush him. We really have. He shouldn't be here. No, you're right. Then why is why he here? Why is he here, George? Why isn't he in the minor gonna, leagues? Are you going to let 
a great talent as he has. He has a tremendous talent. See, if he's not up here come July, he's going to football. But if his name was Joe Smith, True. George, you wouldn't True. have him in the major True. leagues right But now. I'm not competing with a National League football team for him either. But he, you, Joe Smith. But you, listen, Deion Sanders is an all-pro quarterback. We know that. That's yep. a proven fact. We don't know that he's ever a 300 hitter. Well, if you listen to my coaches, they will tell you he is, that he is a genuine superstar in the making. Now, that's all I can tell you. That they think he's a superstar in the making. Yeah, if he hits 150, George, he might get You're pressured right. and he might go down a ladder anyway. You're right. And he's, got a, and he's got a $2 million dollar buyout thing anyway with the retirement clause. Hey, so, a lot of these young guys, let me tell you something, a lot of these young guys up here may be, may be going through very bad times before they get their feet on the ground, you know? And that's what I, I'm faced with. But I also look down my averages and I see that the three or four highest guys on the team with stranding runners in scoring position are not the young kids. No, your big star is not hitting. He's not hit it. Well, he's not the only one. Well, he, but he's having an awful time right now. Sure he is. The worst that uh, we've ever seen. I, I agree with you, and I told him the other day in Milwaukee, I sat with him and talked. This guy is, to me, Jack Armstrong and Frank Merriwell all rolled into one. And everybody said, sign him. You can't let him get away. And I totally agree with that. I still agree with it. Uh, he is struggling as no superstar probably has ever struggled. But I think he's carrying with him, and I don't care what anybody says. I think he carries with him in his mind this idea that he's making $3 million a year, and he has to live up to it every single second. He has to deliver every single time. The pressure is all on him. He's getting some good pitches to hit. He's getting down good pitches to hit, but he's just going after some bad ones. He will straighten around. This, this size isn't Don Mattingly. He can't carry the weight of this team on his shoulders. Despite the fact, George, you think he's Jack Armstrong and Frank Merrill, where they all wrapped up with the run two years ago, you almost shared in the Giants for Will Clark and Craig Lefferts. Then he wasn't Jack Armstrong. How come he's Jack Armstrong now? Well, I mean, as a person as well as an, an athlete, he's just an outstanding young man. Did he's you good. almost shared him to the Giants? We had talked about it, yes. Well, that... If he's Yankee tradition and Yankee symbol, why even talk to the Giants about trading your Jack Armstrong, Frank Merriwell? Well, be, not, no, you see, now you two guys are too young. It's Frank Merriwell. Well, that Frank goes way back to Yale in the 30s. Well, you know me. I always get that wrong. Frank Merriwell. Well, you're too young. See, you're too young, but, you guys. But he was Jack Armstrong, Frank Merriwell, and you almost traded him. How come? Because uh, when we were talking about it, with the time, we didn't know where we were going. We didn't know whether uh, Clark, how good he was going to be. I had people telling me Clark was every bit as good as Mattingly. I, I, you know, there's certain intangibles, though, where Mattingly's concerned, that in the end uh, won out. Don Mattingly, uh, you won't ever catch me saying anything bad about him. He gives me 150% all the time. I, I don't ever recall. And you guys said I did. I don't ever recall saying anything that way. George, you, you aware how upset and how frustrated the fans are in this town? Sure. Especially with, with you and, and, and with all these changes. Are they upset with with Don? Oh, yeah, I think they are upset with Don, but they're oh. upset with you because they've been living with it for 15, 17, 17 years. years. Seven, obvious, wait a minute, wait a minute. 17 years of the best record in baseball. But, George, listen, in the 70s when it was a circus, it was tolerable because you were winning. The circus now isn't too much fun. Hey, listen, no, it isn't. It's tough when you're losing. It's always tough. In 1978, they were saying, some one guy wrote an article, the Yankees are done. How wonderful it is on the Red Sox. Here they are, 14 games up, peace and harmony. Everybody's together. Now we start creeping up on them. George, by that's September a long 1st, time ago. By, wait a minute. By, but it illustrates a point. By September 1st, George Scott saying Lynn's choking. This guy saying Scott isn't hustling. All of this, and they went to pieces. Now, winning means everything in sports. I'll tell you that. It really does. Once you win, you know, it's not, what did you do for me recently? That's what it is. And maybe it should be that way. It's a bottom line business. Sure. It's a bottom line business. And our bottom line over the 17 years is better than anybody in baseball. Over the last decade is better than anybody in baseball. Over the last five years is as good as five of the top teams in baseball. We're right there. You haven't been close, though, in a couple years now, now George. Well, let me show you one other thing. If we are so bad, how come we're the greatest draw in baseball on the road? Because that uniform's still worth something. Yeah, and so is the team. Now, let me tell you something. NBC, two years ago, in 88, did a study. They did it every year while they had the Saturday afternoon baseball. They do it in April, and they do it in July. And those studies showed them, area by area, which team people wanted to see most. Now, naturally, if you poll you polled in L.A., the Dodgers would be first and the Angels second. But the overall scoring of all areas, and they did it ten times from uh, in the five years, from 83 to 84, 88, the Yankees were first all except one time. Is that yeah. because of you, George, or because of Ruth it's because Garrett and DiMaggio? Well, Ruth Gary and DiMaggio aren't out there anymore. Yeah, George, so it's because of the team. George, they don't, they're, not going, they're not saying that now because they want to they see... They are. They, want, they don't want to see Mel Hall and Lyrus, I'll tell you that. Let me tell you this. 
They are saying it because we're drawing more people than anybody else in either league on the road. Now, if there's some reason that we aren't doing it at home, we've got a fine organization four miles away. They got the best of us right now, as we had the best of them for a lot of years. But don't forget this, too. The media contributes a lot to it. The media shapes the people's minds. Well, we're not there playing for these guys, George. Right but why now, do people want to see us in Cleveland? Well, I, I don't know. You because, know. They, because a lot of ways, they, for all these years, they've hated the Yankees and they wanted to beat them. And there's, no, Yankees, no. And there's Yankee fans. There's, always always, been there's Yankee fans everywhere. That's why the, the, a whole generation of kids grew up idolizing the Yankees because sure. they were great. Sure. That's why. And but they've been they, great they, in the last 17 years. Well, and don't tell me they haven't. Not been. great. You, you sure. had, didn't win a championship in the 80s. You, you, you didn't have a draft back. You then. didn't win any championships in the 80s. We you? won the American League pennant in '81. Bill Clay's been in the last well, two World Series. In the last 17 years, my competitors have had nine winning seasons and eight losing seasons. George, but would you give up? And they won a championship you, in '86. George, but would and they won a pennant in '88. Would you give up five bad years to get six or seven years where they are averaging 95 wins I a year? I think you may have to do that with the draft the way it is today. I think you may have to face it. Well, otherwise, the Dallas Cowboys would still be up there. This idea of parity is not good for sports, in my opinion. You shouldn't be penalized so for doing any, well. George, you, you, you may have to take five very lean years in order, as the Mets did, in order to get to the top again. So and the then they'll go down. The organization's not taking any of the blame for this, huh? Oh, yeah, sure. You've made some lousy trades. Sure. You, we've, we've made some great trades. You've changed managers we've like some other great people, free changed shirts. Uh, we've got some great free agents. And some bad ones. And some bad ones. Nobody's right all the time. I've never seen, the last guy I know of that was perfect on this earth walked on the water. And nobody's done it since. So, yeah. George, you know, nobody's a, perfect. A couple of things that the fans yeah. always talk about. Okay. Are you going to keep that team in the Bronx? We don't know at this point. Uh, you know, uh, the problem is our parking is terrible here. Awful. I mean, you you can go to Shea and park within sight of the stadium. You come here, you may park five blocks away, you can't even see the stadium. Might not be a problem the rest of the season. Traffic. Well, it may, I think you're going to see some changes. I, I think people are going to get excited about these young kids, and we're going to bring up more, and maybe they'll come up here and watch us. So I mean, everybody's been telling me, wait a minute, everybody's been telling me, go with these young kids. You can do it. Will you bite the bullet? Well, we're going to bite it. And I think it's see. a good idea, George. And I think the fans will support it. Yeah, I listen to you guys. You've said that. So, so in other words, it's a good idea. In other words, George, if Jersey builds you a beautiful beautiful stadium and a beautiful lot with thousands of parking spaces, you might listen. No, no, I don't know that I'll listen. I'll tell you, we've become very close with the new administration. The mayor has gone out of his way to be great with me. I mean, he's been unbelievable. Uh, you know, but it just seems in some areas, no matter what I do, I can't win. I bring Mandela, the Mandela rally, into Yankee Stadium. All of a sudden, the guy that's a promoter who quits him says, well, Steinbrenner delayed it three days. Steinbrenner delayed it. Shea was open. They, did, they wouldn't let him in there. You know what, George? You shouldn't have had Mandela bring all those Met fans because they booed you pretty good that night. Did they really? Yeah. Well, he wore the jacket, and that's good. And maybe he brought a lot of Met fans, but uh, today we gave the city of New York $100,000. You know, how about how about those stories to pay for all the expenses for that? You know, speaking of the Mets, George, how about all those stories that everybody reads in spring training over the last five, six years that spring training games against the Mets was brutal to win, and you had to go 25-5 and five in spring training and beat the Mets nine times. How about that? Is that true? 25 and 5, then the, would rather go, what now? Give it up to me again. Spring training games against the Mets yeah. and spring training overall in your era has been very, very important. It's very important to win a lot of spring training games, especially when you play the Mets. How Early that? on, that's true. You're absolutely right. Lately, no. And I'll tell you why. We went up to play the Mets this year, and we had two Cy Young Award winners pitching against us. Now, that was important to Davey to win that. I said that at the time. No, I, I have nothing but respect for that organization. For Will Pond, Double Day, right on down. Uh, it's a fine, outstanding organization. It used to mean an awful lot to me when I was the new kid in the block to beat the Mets because they were riding high. Uh, but now it doesn't mean so much anymore because we got in such a mess this year. Year before last, we beat them too. This year, they beat us too. Uh, Freddie, uh, yeah, but, the fact you, but the fact you can even tell me who won the games in spring training indicates that it's very important to you. I can, I can remember what that series is. But not in the way it used to be, not win at all costs. I mean, we paraded a young kid out there in the ninth inning, he throws up a home run ball. But that young man, Mills, is going to be a great player for us. George, nobody cares I was about the those first. games. Well, I know it. I but you do, George, you're telling me. Not anymore. anymore. Not anymore. Well, I can know the results and still say, I don't care. Hey, George. It, it, uh, early on, now I'm telling you the truth, early on it meant a lot to me. Now it doesn't mean that much to me. In fact, I don't know that we're going to play him next year. And you know why? Because we came up here and we lost three days going into the season because we had some inclement weather up here. WFAN here in New York, George Steinbrenner. Michael, go ahead. George, would you ever sell the Yankees? Michael, I don't think so. I think I would rather see my son take over and, and keep the Yankees. The Yankees kind of like a Mona Lisa. 
And, uh, you know, I, nothing is forever, nothing's for certain but death and taxes. But, but I just don't feel disposed to, no. How about the Liz Smith rumor yesterday, George, or last week about the fact that Reggie Jackson's available? Big name, 70 and 92 win team, 5,000 in September. Would you bring Reggie back to manage if you wanted to? Reggie and I are extremely close. We've talked in the last two weeks numerous times. He's anxious to get into ownership in baseball. He was hoping he could get into San Diego. That didn't work out. Reggie's an outstanding guy. Uh, we had, we had our, our arguments and our times, but I think if you went to Reggie, uh, you wouldn't find uh, him on the anti-George list so much because we talk a lot. Yeah, would, would, would you, you want to would would you you him out? I'm very happy with Stump Merrill right now. I really am. Now, I, I don't know, Reggie, in his talks with me, mentioned nothing about that. He mentioned becoming a baseball advisor to them out there and being part ownership. So, George, as we start this... So I wouldn't rule that out, no. Oh. You would not rule that out? Can you, what I just George, told can you, you. Bring, can you bring Reggie here as manager? No, I'm you talking about ownership. Well, you just said you wouldn't rule it out. No, 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 no. Oh. Reggie's going to own a piece. No, He's no, going to no. get the right field stand. You guys are so young and so aggressive and so good that you sometimes run over what I say. Like I'm that. sorry, George. Yeah. Now, George... 25 and 42. Yeah. Trying to make the turning point here. Yeah. Good road trip. All right, George. Right. Four and three. Oh, not George, bad. Come on. Not for bad. us. For us. Not bad. Hey, go for look, us, at, our, go look right. at our record miraculous okay. in Milwaukee in the last few years. I know. Against that Toronto lineup, not bad. You look no. at that lineup. You, George, That's a tremendous lineup. Why don't you try and make a trade for this older road kid? Give him the whole team. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, he is something. I don't know what he knows that my coaches don't, but he certainly killed us. He was unbelievable. I, I didn't know that much about him. Are you going to stay, as you try to make this turnaround with this organization now, are you willing to say it's going to take us, hey, two, three years yep. to get this turned around, and you're going to be the man calling the shots never, here? No, never thought I'd say that. Never thought I'd say that, that, because I didn't think you could do that in New York. I knew you could do it in some of these other cities. Toronto did it, and everybody's happy. The now. Mets did it. The Mets did it. Went five seasons. They were awful. Last. Drew 700,000 yeah. people right. to shave. They did it. You own a town then. Now you don't own a town anymore. That's right. And that's the thing shift. Does that, does, that, does, that, does that bug you, you George, that the no, Mets are not like time? it used to? Not like it used to. So, I, so in other words, George Steinbrenner has mellowed in the last It's year. a kinder, gentler, more mellow George got, Bush and George Steinbrenner. I got an idea. Boy, for I, I'm a great I, supporter of his. Boy, George, I don't buy that one either. Well, you got you got to give. Now, look, you say, who's going to help you build it? You guys have made an offer. Now I'm going to tell you something. We talk about accountability. Everybody's accountable. I'm accountable for the bottom line, the one and lost record of my team. Now, one thing, one pet peeve I have about sportscasters and writers. Uh -oh. One year, a couple of sports writers in this town picked the Giants and the Jets to be in the Super Bowl. Right. Well, it was so far from wrong, but you never heard anybody say, hey, you picked them. Now, I'd like to meet with you guys. I would really like to sit down with you for a couple hours and pick your brains. I'm serious about this. You got it. And let's talk about it. And let's find out what you think. And then we'll sit down and list the things that I think and you think, and we'll see whether you're right. I got a, you may have all the answers. George, I, I got an idea. Would Pete and George Reddy get into some problems? Mike and I could be the dual GMs. Hey, I, I, we I, could I, break the tie. Listening to you, you've got a lot of knowledge about the game. But let's put you on the line now. George, I got an idea. serious. You want to do that? Absolutely. George, all right, that's a deal. George, let me ask you a question about, if I can, is there a way, seriously now, well, I'm it, serious about no, what I, I just said. No, forget that for us. I want to bring you something else real quick. Is it possible, and I saw him the other day at a, at a, at a Met ball game, and he's a Yankee and everything else, is it possible to somehow mend the, face, mend the fences of Yogi Berra? I wish Mad Dog in the worst day, the worst way I could do that. Have you I, tried? I, I've tried, yes. I don't know how. If I knew a way, if you could find a way for me to do it, but whether I, it's an apology or what it is, I've tried everything I know. What, writing him letters and stuff like that? No, no. By inviting him to things, having a special day, uh... You know, I would do anything to get him. I've done that. You know, I did have a special day. Do you regret nothing else? Yogi, uh, I, I just wish it would happen. I, you know, the old Yankees went through it with Maris, and I brought him back here. He wasn't ever going to come to Yankee Stadium again. And uh, we brought him back that year, and it was a tremendous feeling. I wish I could do the same thing with Reggie. You know, there have been a lot of guys that have gone out of here saying awful things. Goose Gossage is one. I'm in touch with Goose regularly on business deals. Right now, he's talking to me. Uh, he came back. There have been a lot of guys that have gone out of here saying bad things. Tommy John didn't have much nice to say, but he's back. I mean, I wish I could get that done with Yogi. If you can help me on that, I'd appreciate that. Was that a mistake letting him go in 85 after 16 games? Uh, I'd have to say it probably was, yes. Well, we've gotten to admit you made a lot of mistakes. Yeah, he didn't play badly that year. Yeah, though. I made a lot of mistakes. Everybody makes a lot of mistakes. The guy that doesn't think he makes mistakes uh, and is willing to admit it, 
Uh, the, to say that he doesn't uh, isn't much of a guy. That was that was probably a mistake, and there have been there have been numerous others I've made. But George, you're a businessman first. Yep. Obviously, always have been a businessman first. Have you come to the realization maybe through all this turmoil, all these 206 different players in the 80s, the managerial changes, that maybe you should keep your hands off the baseball uh -huh. team? Okay, now you just said that to me, but a minute ago you said, well, why didn't you do this and why didn't you do that? You guys got to make up your mind. Well, well, what I'm saying I mean, is, why didn't I interfere on the Reggie, Reggie, uh, Ricky Henderson trade? See, you're being selective, George. See, my off feeling is, and, and yeah. probably every fan who's listening to this right now, is well, that you're involved in all of this anyway. Well, I don't, that's not so. Absolutely not so on Ricky Henderson. Absolutely not so. I didn't want to see how could it. How could a front office guy who works for you trade a valuable commodity like that without discussing it with you? Hey, it wasn't that he didn't discuss it. I was against. I told him I was against. I told him I didn't want to, really want to see Winfield go out of here. But that didn't make any difference. I backed off. You guys are all saying, you know, get involved. Be hands -in. Why didn't you stop that? And then in the next breath, you're telling me you're too involved. I will stand on the record of the team over 17 years, over the decade of the 80s, or over the last five years. It just seems, George, that you're selectively involved. It's like you're involved sometimes, and when things go bad, you're not involved. Oh, no, no, no. I told you today I've taken the blame for an awful lot here today. No, I, well, you yes, have. I have. No, I agree. I'm not going to sit there. Yeah. No, you, 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 what's the biggest mistake you made in the decade of the 80s? Jeez, that would be tough to say. <laughs> It'd take me a day to figure out. No, come on. Just, how, all right, let me tell you. Dick, how's it? The biggest mistake I made in the Firing 80s, Mike Ferraro after that play at third base in the 80 playoff game against the I Royals? I think it would have to be Hauser or Reggie. Which one? Uh, I, you, you got it. You got it. Reggie and Hauser. Uh, Mike Ferraro's back with me. He's back. He's my first base coach. Uh, if he says bad things about me, I'd be surprised. These guys know when they go away. That when, Like when Rick Cerrone called me, he says, look, I'm a free agent. Nobody has made me an offer. Nobody wants me. He says, will you give me a chance? And he said, you'd have to give up a second round draft choice to get me back. I said, hey, and I said some awful things. I said, Rick, forget what you said. You were black and blue for me. You, you played 150%. Get your ass down to Lauderdale and get your uniform. And he couldn't believe it. He says, why are you doing this for me? I said, because I don't carry those grudges. And go back to the 81 clubhouse and you and Saron had that big That's fight. right. That's right. But I understand those things. I've been in a number of locker rooms over the last 40 years. Uh, as a coach in the Big Ten and in, in other ways, I understand athletes and I understand the heatedness of it. I want to win as bad as anybody in New York wants to win. So I do those things too. I understood that about Rick. But, but you know, it's, it's, uh, to, to err is human, to forgive is something different. And to me, that, that really bears a lot. I mean, it, I will always be that way. These, these fellows are all. I mean, I'm talking to Goose Gossage almost once a week. Uh, and you, when he went out of here, nobody ever thought I'd ever speak with him. Joe and I have, and he called me. But, you know, uh, I, I feel very strongly uh, that uh, Reggie never should have gotten away uh, from us. Uh, that's very strong. And I feel very strongly about uh, Dick Hauser. Uh, I, I know that what's been said, and sure, uh, maybe I was wrong in that, but I, I tried to make amends to him and to his wife, Nancy, and I think she would tell you that I have. Uh, that I stood by her and sometimes when... You know, George, it, it, sounds like you, it sounds like you went around killing these brush fires after you started them to begin with. Well, uh, I don't start all the brush fires. I don't start. I won't take the blame for all of these things. I, you know, I went and sat with Red to get Reggie Jackson to come to New York. I went and sat on a Thanksgiving day in the lobby of the O'Hare Inn in Chicago. I was the first guy in, not one other owner, all general managers, and I sat all day. I was determined to be the first guy in and the last guy out, and that's how I got him. And he was great for me. And I will always have a great warm spot. I never should let him get away. If I told you that story, you would, you, you'd be amazed. But we were double-crossed. But so be it. Uh, that's behind us. I that was a very bad mistake to let him get away. And, uh, and you're right on Dick Hauser. George, did you grow up a Yankee fan? I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, an Indians fan in awe of the Yankees. Well, you must have got a lot in 54. So, they won 111 games. Yeah, you know, 100, but that was 54 and yeah. 48, and it hasn't happened since. And you were, <laughs> but you grew up in already Yankees. In awe of them, because that when they would come to town. And everything else, all yeah, that. And, and now you're going to try to say that I've killed them. I'm, I'm asking you yeah. where you think that stands today. Uh, well, let me tell you something. Today I can't go out and just pick Mantle and pick Maris. And say, I'm not talking about York. just in terms of players. I'm talking about in terms of an organization and class, well, dignity, the well, way well, things right. are handled. All right. Everything is different today. Everything's different in your business. Everything's different in television. In those days, there were no player agents. There were no uh, union, although I think that maybe a union in a lot of ways has been a good thing. I happen to think Don Ferrer is a good leader. But... Everything in this game has changed today. When they come to the ballpark, they don't just come with their glove and their and their ball and their bat. They come with their glove, their ball, and their bat, their briefcase, and their agent, one step behind. 
and it's a different game. It's got to you got to deal with it a different way. But you can't. You guys can't walk away from the fact. You, you just can't if you're fair to me. And I don't think many people understand that in the 1980s that I'm being raked over for, we won more games than anybody in baseball. George, you won't let that one die, will you? Uh, now, wait a minute. You know, we're bottom line guys. If you're a bottom line guy. Your ratings are tremendous in the city of New York right now. Yes. Now, if those ratings ever slip... We're out of here. We're the first well, to say that. George. But, yeah. see, but George, but George, your ratings have slipped. You're still here. George. No, 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 no. George, no, you're, you're, you're a football Our guy. Our one loss record hasn't. George, you're a football guy. Yeah. You could, no, don't say football. Well, you listen. You were a Big Ten assistant All Northwest right, okay. and Purdue. You hang out with Hank Stram the whole deal. Now, listen. Hank's a good guy. You don't don't say anything bad about him. I like Ken Hank Stram. I like his haircut, but he's one of the greatest guys I know. I'm a CBS guy, George. I like Hank Stram. Now, listen. You got him. If I say to you, who are the big winners in the NFL, what do you say to me? Who are the big winners? Yeah. I think Paul Brown. When no, no, I'm talking about teams right, oh, teams right now or through the last decade. Hey, San Francisco. Okay, do you talk to me about the Denver Broncos? Do you talk to me about the Cleveland hey. Browns or the Rams? They won a ton of games, George. They just didn't win any Super Bowls. You didn't win any Super so Bowls. Do you think the fans have given up on the Browns or the fans have given up on Denver? No, but you're, you're boasting this record, but you didn't win anything in the 80s. We won an American League pennant in the 80s. In a split season? Yeah. Well, we won an American League pennant. I finished sixth the Come second on. half of the season. Yeah, but, well, who won the playoffs? You did. Okay. Thanks to Oscar Thank Gamble. You. Thank you very much. Thanks to Oscar Gamble. Thank, Thank you very much. George, very good hour. Thanks for coming on. Good hey, luck. I enjoyed it. Now, listen, I'm holding you two guys George, to it. George, we're coming out. up. We're coming up. I'm by, you coming up. I'm going to buy a dinner. lunch. You're George, buying dinner. dinner. Send lunch. a Fugazi lunch. limo dinner. for us. We'll be up. Dinner is too expensive. Fuck lunch. You're getting lunch. That's all. Well, what do I get? I get a little veal. A hot dog and a little, you know. But I like the Yankee hot dogs, George. A little, how about peanuts? All right, you, you uh, buy me, you buy my guy, and I'll check him up. That's about, you're coming, I'm going to ask you some things, and then we're going to trace how those things come out. Thank you, George. Okay.